Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Ladies and gentlemen, start your emulators. It's time for yet another episode of Retro S, giving you guys a nostalgia fix as you review games from your childhood. This is Sparta Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disable Game Review Series, and this episode we return the clocks back to 1997 as we take a look at the remaster of a cult classic action adventure game. Is this game worthy of remembrance or should this game be lost forever in the pages of gaming history? Without, without further ado, let's find out. The late 90s was in the middle of a golden era of video games. 1997 saw the release of the N64. Sony's PlayStation took the world by storm and to a game that were distributed and on CDs. 1997 saw the lot of cult classic releases. For example, the first entry of Rockstar's massively successful Grand Theft Auto series. The game that shown the world that first bunch of shooters on a console was a viable idea, GoldenEye 007. And finally, one of the most recognizable, world-famous JRPGs, Final Fantasy VII. Speaking of which, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be released in a few days. Are you excited about the game? Have you pre-ordered it yet? Or are you holding out for a possible release on other systems, i.e. PC and Xbox Series S and S? And as always, let me know down in those comments. 1987 saw the release of this cult classic. The game itself was the second entry of Core Designs' its highly successful Tomb Raider series. The majority of people who played this game hailed this as a masterpiece, and other people hailed this title as the best game ever made. The game takes plus one year after the first entry of the series. A cult is seeking an ancient relic known as the Dagger of Xi'an. It is up to you to travel the world and find the relic before the cult does. The accessibility scores are as follows. Please note that the recently released remake of the original trilogy on PC was used to test this game. Right to kick off proceedings, visibility given 10. There are colorblind modes in this game. To be honest, there is very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that will can cause an issue for a colorblind player. So a player with a visual impairment will be able to play this game with very little issues. Next up, audibility, I give it 10. Due to the remake, there are subtitles available in this game. However, the original 1997 release of this game does not. Also, there is no way of customizing the game's font size and the menus and subtitles. This puts the player at risk of getting any eye strain while trying to read the subtitles and text in the menus. So despite the shortfalls with the original release, this game is very suitable for a player with hearing impairment. Next up, Mobility Game in 11. In the PC version of the game, the keyboard and mouse controls can be fully customized to suit your impairment. The same goes for the original 1997 released on PC. The remake has full controller support right out of the box, but it's still the bottom layouts can be fully customized. This gives the players a choice of which input method the player would prefer to use when playing this game. So a player with a mobility impairment will be able to play this game with absolutely no issues whatsoever. That's certainly by no means least gameplay give it 10. The reason why I chose this title out of the three games that are included in the classic Lara Croft trilogy is that the PC version of Tomb Raider 2 was among the first video games I've ever played. This game was an excellent blend of third person action games of the era mixed in with puzzle solving to slow the pace down. Each and every level has three secrets. These secrets are silver, jade and gold. Out of, for obvious reasons, each one is progressively hard to locate and obtain. For example, in the first level, the Great Wall of China, the silver secret is hidden in the starting area. The Jade secret is in between two walls with spikes, which moves towards each other, and the gold secret is located in a large area close to the end of the level 
after a long climb down. By the way, didn't forget to mention that the area is guarded by two T-Rex dinosaurs. We interrupt this retro ass episode to bring you Dino Crisis. This rewards you for keeping an eagle eye out and thoroughly exploring each level. With achievements added to the remaster, there is an intent to replay every level. The remaster has two control schemes, modern controls and tank controls. Modern controls change the way you control Lara to make it closer to a modern day action game. Tank control adds a more classic feeling to the game that the original 1997 release had. After all, when this game released, tank controls were so perceived as the norm. It was featured in the classics, for example, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, by the way, still does, and the Konami survival horror classic, Silent Hill. If you're a mobility pair player, consider tank controls as it powerfully replicates a legacy stick layout. Due to the game's age, the level layouts were specifically built for tank controls. With the remaster, if you press the start button, it will switch between classic and remastered graphics mode. When you're using classic mode, you are soft locked to 30 frames per second. After all, 30 frames per second was the norm back in 1997. In summary, Tomb Raider 2 is an all-time classic which features the perfect blend of action and shooting mechanics with a few driving sessions with puzzle solving mechanics to slow the pace down. The soundtrack is amazing. If you need further proof, go to YouTube, look up Tomb Raider 2 Beauty Unfurled or Tomb Raider 2 Cradle to Grave, kick your feet up and relax. In terms of system requirement, the game is extremely low spec friendly, so if you're looking for a low spec action adventure game to play, I cannot recommend this game enough to you. If you want a PlayStation and don't own this game, you're doing it wrong. And the overall score is a massive 102.5%. This is Sparta Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabled Game Review signing out, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Thank mm -hmm. you.